And the aquarium with hang on a back filter also definitely has an increase in dissolved oxygen in the water. Hey guys and welcome back, today we'll be covering another super interesting topic but instead of only talking about it, we're also gonna be doing a little experiment. In my previous video you've seen me showing these parcels and I told you guys that I'm gonna be using them for the next video, so here we go, let's open these parcels. So this parcel is from Netherlands and uh, I have these parcels lying around for quite a while now just because I didn't have time to do this experiment, uh, but now I have a little bit of time on my hands so let's go ahead with it. So this parcel is from a company called Seaflower in Netherlands and it is an O2 Profi test, which is an oxygen test kit. And this is a cheaper version. We all know that those ones used in laboratories are super accurate, but are just way too expensive and I couldn't afford those. This one may not be the most accurate though, but it should be just fine for this particular experiment. Let's check the other package. So this other parcel is from a Danish online shop called paradisefisken.dk and I really enjoy shopping with these guys. I paid for everything, this video is not sponsored and uh, I got even a sample of some kind of food. And here we go, we have, oh, this is well packed, I made a little mess. So in this parcel we have two oxygenators and we're gonna be doing a little bit of testing with these. So let's jump into what this video is gonna be all about. Behind me I have six small cube aquariums, of which five are run by sponge filters and one is run by a hang on a back filter which is hidden behind this big rock. A Couple of weeks ago I've increased the amount of fish that are in that aquarium and I've also added a colony of Bloody Mary shrimps. Similarly as us human beings, our fish, shrimps and other aquatic creatures, you name it, need oxygen to survive. Now they'll observe oxygen dissolved in the water into their bloodstream and release carbon dioxide aka CO2. CO2 can actually be toxic for our fish and it is therefore important that we provide consistent amount of dissolved oxygen in our water. So how can we make sure that there is enough dissolved oxygen in our water for healthy life of our aquarium creatures? Well first of all we can always use airstone which is super cheap and one of the most effective alternatives of adding oxygen into the water. We can also use sponge filter which is air powered internal filtration system and it's also one of my favorite ways because it both provides oxygenating the water and also water filtration. Now I was also told that the most effective way is using oxygenator and we're gonna be testing it today. A Couple of days ago I was observing my aquariums and I found out that my growing up male guppy juveniles which are in the only aquarium that's not run by sponge filter but hang on a back filter are gasping for air. So this was the clear sign that there is not enough dissolved oxygen in the water and I knew that I need to do something about it and in my mind I was thinking okay this may be a great opportunity for an experiment. So I jumped on the internet and got myself oxygen measuring test kit and now first thing that I'm super interested in is what is the difference of dissolved oxygen levels in the aquariums that are run by sponge filters and in the aquarium that is run by hang on a back filter and doesn't provide that much aeration into the water. And as I have never been testing dissolved oxygen levels in the water, I first of all want to find out how this bad boy works. <laughs> it seems like pretty simple test kit, so let's find out how this works. Instruction step one, add to the test vial five milliliters of water, add five drops of O2-1 and swirl gently for 20 seconds. Do not shake since this could change the oxygen content of water too much. So let's do that. And as we only have one of these little cups, we're gonna have to test one aquarium at a time. So let's begin with aquarium number one. Five milliliters of water. Here we go. Five drops of O2-1. Where are we? O two one four five. Here we go. O two one five drops, and now twenty seconds. One two three four eighteen nineteen twenty. At five drops of O two two and swirl gently for fifteen seconds. Allow to stand marine water three minutes or one minute for fresh water. So. We need to add, we need to close this one first. 
and we need to add O2 number 2. Very simple test kit, I like it. And it was once again 5 drops and swirl gently for 15 seconds. 1, 4, 5. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 14, 15. And now we need to let it stand for a minute. 30 seconds. And that was a minute. The last step is add 5 drops of O2-3 and swirl for 5 seconds after each drop. Allow 1 minute for color development. So let's do that. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now we need to let it rest for another minute. Nicely changing colors, guys. So here we go. One minute has passed, and let's see the results. Place the test vial on a white part of the color scheme and compare the colors by looking from above. An intermediate color corresponds to an intermediate oxygen content. The values on the color chart are in milligrams per liter of oxygen. Okay, so let's find out. So looking at this with my naked eye, I would say we're somewhere between 8 to 12 milligrams per liter. It is closer to 8, so I would say that it's probably somewhere around 9. So I'm going to write 9 down as a result for the first aquarium. And I'm going to test the other aquariums as well. I'm not going to be bothering you with that because that would be probably the most boring thing you've ever seen. So I'm going to come back to you guys with the final results. I have so far tested four aquariums and all of them are run by a sponge filter and values of all of these aquariums were almost the same around nine or eight milligrams per liter now i'm finally testing the aquarium that's run by hang on a back filter and uh, as i've mentioned i've seen fish not entirely gasping for air but they're definitely up on the surface much more than the other fish uh, so i guess that this aquarium that's run by hang on a back filter is going to have a little bit lower value but let's see how low it's gonna be. So as I thought the amount of oxygen in that aquarium is significantly lower and it is only 6 milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen and uh, it actually says that try to maintain in fresh water aquariums or garden pond an oxygen content of 8 milligrams per liter or higher. That means that this is not enough and uh, we're gonna have to fix that. So I have all the test results ready and as I said guys this is not the most accurate measurement but for this experiment it's completely enough. Uh, as we know that almost every single one aquarium with a sponge filter has uh, the amount of dissolved oxygen per liter around 8 to 9 milligrams as far as I can tell. The one that's run by hang on the back filter only has 6 which is not enough. And I was told that uh, these oxygenators which are oxygen and water quality for small aquariums up to 60 liters are actually one of the best ways how to increase the amount of oxygen in the aquarium. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to install this oxygenator into that aquarium that has hang on a back filter and just to not be biased and make only assumptions I'll also install one in the aquarium which already has sponge filter in it. And then we're gonna test it again after 24 hours and we're gonna compare the results. And as I have never used these before as well, <laughs> let's see how these guys work. So we have a little tube. Pull the plastic cap off the glass container. Be aware of the right number of catalysts. Two catalysts for aquarium between 30 and 60 liters and one for aquarium under 30 liters. All these aquariums are 30 liters, so we're only gonna be using one. 
I was just wondering what these two thingies are for, but on the picture they're inside, so I'm just gonna leave them there. Okay, we're supposed to pull the container out and add some liquid. It doesn't smell. There we go. We should leave one centimeters from the top, then close it and put it back into this thingy. And now it should be ready to roll, so let's test it in the aquarium. So let's quickly cover what this tiny little device actually is. Oxidator is a small super genius thing that doses very small amounts of hydrogen peroxide into the water. Hydrogen peroxide is dosed in a small glass jar that you can see on a video. Ceramic cover at the bottom of the device also has silver element in it that creates chemical reaction with hydrogen peroxide, dissolving oxygen into the water in form of small micro bubbles. This is totally safe and also a more effective way of increasing levels of oxygen in your aquarium than for example airstone. However, the only disadvantage is that once all the hydrogen peroxide is used, you need to refill it and therefore this alternative may be quite pricey. Okay guys, it's three days later, I have actually decided to go with three days instead of one day because uh, those oxidators, it took them a little bit longer time to actually start working properly, so I let them work for three days and now it's time to do the second round of testing. So first we're gonna test again aquarium number one, which is the fossil aquarium with shrimps and uh, Morse code tetras. And it had nine milligrams per liter on the first day when I was testing it. And let's see whether oxy oxygenator or oxidator made some difference. So it definitely seems that the value is increased. Before we added oxygenator or oxidator or whatever you want to call it, it was 9 milligrams of dissolved oxygen per liter of water. Right now it seems that it's spot on 12 milligrams per liter, what would represent 3 milligrams increase in 3 days just by adding oxidator into the aquarium. And uh, let's test the other aquarium as well. And the aquarium with hang on a back filter also definitely has an increase in dissolved oxygen in the water. Before, during the first measurement, it was 6 milligrams per liter. Now it seems that it's somewhere between 8 and 12. I've wrote down 9, so that would also represent 3 milligrams per liter increase. What is now a safe value, as it says that we should try to maintain freshwater aquariums or garden pond an oxygen content of 8 milligrams per liter or higher, so 9 milligrams should be safe right now. Although we need to take into consideration that this is a very simple basic test kit and the laboratory one would definitely do much better and more accurate job. I think for purposes of this small experiment it is definitely enough. I will take also a sample from aquarium number two because nothing is changed over there so the value should be the same uh, just for controlling purposes and then I'm gonna come back to you guys with my conclusion. So here we have the results of our small experiment. Now aquarium number one has just a regular sponge filter and before we added oxidator it had 9 milligrams of dissolved oxygen per liter of water. Now after we added oxidator and let it work for 30 days the volume increased to 12 milligrams per liter what represents 3 milligrams per liter increase. The lowest value of oxygen per liter of water was recorded in the aquarium with hang on a back filter. Now this was quite expected, it was 6 milligrams per liter and as I've mentioned it should be at least 8, so that was not enough. However, after adding oxidator and letting it work for 3 days, the volume increased to 9 milligrams per liter, what right now should be alright as it is above 8. All the aquariums with only sponge filters reported the consistent value of 8 milligrams of oxygen per liter of water, what seems to be just fine as you guys can see behind me that my guppies are doing absolutely great and they're thriving. So what is my conclusion of this experiment guys? So first of all, if you only have hang on a back filter in your guppy breeding tank, I would recommend adding aerator, airstone or something like that, or maybe oxidator seems to be just amazing tool to use. I'm using it first time so I'm new into this, but it seems to be working just fine and it seems that it is actually doing a great job. If you're just thinking about what kind of filtration you should get for your guppy aquarium, I would definitely recommend you sponge filters. You guys can see that the values of dissolved oxygen in the water are staying consistent. It provides aeration and also filtration of the water. So for me, even though it may be the most cheapest alternative from all these that you can see over here, for me it is definitely the best one. 
Thank you very much guys for watching. I really appreciate every single one of you who made it this far. If you've made similar experiment in the past or you have any comments into this particular experiment, make sure to drop them down in the comment section below. And if you're enjoying these vlogs, please don't forget to leave it a like and maybe consider subscribing. It's absolutely free and I really appreciate every single one of my subscribers. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'm gonna see you in that next video.